So I thought you did a great job in here, in the Eighth Circuit Brain, right at the beginning, you, um, you, you credit your sources and you give a little brief overview of Tim Leary's version of the Eighth Circuit model, and then how it was reworked by Robert Anton Wilson, which is where I first heard about it. Robert Anton Wilson did not say where it came from. It was years later that I heard that actually he had gotten it from Tim Leary. And Tim Leary had gotten it from someone else. Right. So what's that story? Because I didn't, I didn't read well, it. Well, back in um, uh, Tim Leary's uh, Millbrook days when he was teaching in Harvard, uh, there was a visiting professor called, uh, well, known as, I don't know what his real name was, but he was uh, in, uh, in this, is, this story is actually introduced to, uh, in the preface of one of uh, Leary's early books called um, What Does Woman Want? Mm -hmm. I have that um, book. And uh, it, uh, it's a loaded question, what does woman want? And uh, Leary actually uh, um, uh, told me that he would uh, give me the answer to that question uh, if, um, if he could whisper it in my ear. And the answer, of course, would you like to hear the answer? Yes. What does woman want? Yes. I have to, I have to whisper it in your ear. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave it, leave it to the imagination of the viewer um, to, to wonder, well, what does woman want? Um, but to get back to the story, uh, Millbrook, back in the early to mid-60s, uh, was, was uh, this estate uh, uh, where uh, Timothy Leary and um, uh, Ram Das, Richard Alpert, and... Uh, Ralph Metzner and a lot of other people um, around that era met. Uh, they, they ex that's where the experimentation with LSD happened. There was communes. There were children raised there. Um, and uh, this professor Adams from Rutgers University, a scholar, showed up and over uh, a, a short period of time uh, uh, proceeded to uh, deliver to Tim Timothy Leary an oral transmission of an esoteric um, treatment of the Hindu chakra system that hasn't been written down any place, but as a, as an oral transmission, oral tradition, that completely blew Leary's mind. Uh, especially when you consider um, uh, Leary's uh, uh, nickname back in uh, Harvard in the Harvard days. Uh, his nickname was Theory Leary. I never heard that. Yeah, yeah. So he was a theoretician. Yes. And so here, here he and was. He came up with the standard model psychological profile test. Absolutely, which this was still this in was, use. This was his his forte, his brilliance, and you can imagine how astonished he was uh, to be presented with this um, uh, oral tradition that that uh, bypassed any of his theoretical modeling capacities because it really pushed him into the possibility of direct experience uh, of gnosis. And uh, and this is, I think, one of the thing that one of the things that um, uh, kind of uh, moved him forward in the exploration of psilocybin and peyote and LSD was the promise of um, uh, direct experience mm. uh, to get past the theory, to get past the model, to get somehow into some epiphany or revelation of a direct energetic connection with whatever sources of energy. Uh, were alive at the moment that he was, you know, breathing in that place, whether it was down in Mexico or whether it was at, at Harvard or whether it was Millbrook. But so, yeah, he, he mm -hmm. popularized um, uh, this oral tradition that he received from this professor and uh, put a kind of a, a, a modern contempo spin on it by, you know, using the word circuit uh, and uh, other uh, ways in which he wrote about it and organized his theories in exopsychology, his, his particular opus on the Eighth Circuit brain system, where he, he really looks to um, uh, neurosciences, uh, neurogenetics, uh, neurolinguistics, uh, anything uh, where he could find um, a way to link the various systems of science to the neurology, to the central nervous system. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the, uh, the, the key um, uh, points that Leary was following, is, is how to um, um, uh, with, with and without drugs, actually, uh, to open up um, uh, the possibility of, of a more direct experience of the central nervous system, which includes the brain, becoming aware, as in the self-aware brain, the self-aware central nervous system, was, I think, one of his uh, uh, goals, is to somehow uh, awaken in people uh, this possibility to become self-aware as nervous systems, not just as physical bodies, if you can imagine that. Well, no, I, now you use the word self-aware, so I'm thinking self-consciousness, that's like state zero. 
that's like before one. Not, <laughs> not self-consciousness. It's, it's almost like, you know, you can, we can be sitting here and, you know, there's a brain in our, our skulls, right? Yeah. Uh, well, what would it be like for that brain to become aware of itself as, uh, let's say, almost a separate entity than the body? Mm -hmm. uh, Leary once told me, you know, I, we had some conversations and he asked me, you know, um, did you, you, you know the, uh, the, the human brain is, is really the alien organ. And those uh, people who awaken their brains and become self-aware brains, they are the aliens amongst us. Mm -hmm. And you can tell by uh, the light shining through their eyes. Mm. I don't recall hearing that. But no, no, it was a private conversation. Okay, okay. <laughs>